Hello friends, this has been a long time coming through months of red tape and bureaucracy, but it's finally here. Steve, what are you talking about? This is the first episode of my new YouTube channel, Israel on Foot. And for those of you that have never been with me on a tour, I'm Steve, the tour guide. And I'm standing atop the oldest section of Jerusalem. It's actually so old that it's situated outside the walls of the so-called old city behind me. Those walls were erected only some 500 years ago, whereas the ruins in my immediate vicinity, some of them are 3,000 years old, which is to say that I'm standing in the nucleus, if you will, of Old Testament Jerusalem, the site of the former Canaanite city of Jebus that King David conquered 3,000 years ago. It's from this spot that Jerusalem would expand through all of her successive ages. But for most of the duration of that era, known as the monarchy, that would stretch from King David to the last of his descendants that sat on the throne of Judah, King Zedekiah. For most of that era, the city was relegated to this site of a mere 65 acres on the southern slope of Mount Zion. So therefore, perhaps the most logical place to begin a series on Jerusalem is the question related to the city's geography. Where does Jerusalem sit in relation to her surroundings? Well, I just said a moment ago that I'm standing on the southern slope of Mount Zion. Now, just so that you know, Mount Zion is synonymous with that famous hill or mountain called Mount Moriah. They're one and the same. Zion is Moriah. Moriah is Zion. Mount Zion continues to ascend to the north, culminating in the famous Temple Mount, which is just behind me, behind the walls of the so-called Old City. I'm now gonna do a 360 degree turn, if you will, to show you the hills and perhaps some of the valleys that surround Jerusalem. Beginning, and boy, is the sun directly in my eyes here, but beginning with the Mount of Olives behind me and to the east. And in the distance, you're looking at the most famous part of the Mount of Olives, speckled with tour sites and churches related to the last days of Jesus's ministry and life here on earth. Now, as I continue to turn, you're still seeing the Mount of Olives, but at this point, the not so famous part, which is covered merely with just a, an hour village or two. And now as I continue to turn, you're looking directly to the south. That hill in the furthest distance is called the Hill of Evil Counsel. And in just a moment, I'm gonna tell you from whence it gets that name, the Hill of Evil Counsel. Behind me now is the hill that's simply called the Western Hill, facing directly from the west of the city. And as I continue the turn back to my starting point with the walls of the so-called old city behind me, and not too far behind those walls again, the Temple Mount. Now, in case my person was in the way of all that, how about I get out of the way and do it all over again so you can see the view unhindered. All right, guys, here we go again without Steve the tour guide in the way. We're looking at the walls of the so-called old city and behind it and above the Temple Mount, that's the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which has been standing for the last 1400 years on the holiest site of Judaism, the Temple Mount. As I continue to turn to my east, we're looking at that most famous part of the Mount of Olives. Between us and the Mount of Olives, where that dirt path is below, is one of the most famous valleys, if not the most famous valley associated with Jerusalem, the Valley of Kidron. Look at how beautiful the Mount of Olives is as the sun is setting behind me. That massive barren space of beige or off-white is the oldest Jewish cemetery in the world. It is flanked by churches and tour sites related to that final week of Jesus' ministry and life here on earth. Okay, as I continue the turn, we're still looking at the Mount of Olives, but at this point, the less famous part, it's inhabited by a single hour village here, okay? As I continue to turn, still looking at the Mount of Olives, but now a new hill comes 
within our view here. It's directly to my south. It's called the Hill of Evil Council. Uh, between us and the Hill of Evil Council is another famous valley of Jerusalem called Gehenna Valley. Now, I told you that I would tell you from whence that name Evil Council comes from. Well, evidently, it's a tradition that began back in the 4th century by some local Christians who believed it was on that hill that Judas betrayed Jesus to the high priest. And ever since, it's been called the Hill of Evil Council. Uh, the sole occupant of the Hill of Evil Council today is the United Nations headquarters here in Jerusalem. And lastly, and hopefully the sun won't totally wash out what we're looking at here, that is the hill known as the Western Hill. Okay, and between here and there is the least famous of all of Jerusalem's valleys, known as the Cheropian, also known as the Cheesemaker Valley. And now we're back to home plate, the walls of the so-called Old City, and the Temple Mount just behind it. All right. And now for a different perspective, let's look at Jerusalem from each of the hills that I just showed you from Jerusalem, starting with the Mount of Olives. I made it to the summit of the Mount of Olives and behold a treat to my eyes, Herod's Temple Mount and the famous Dome of the Rock Islamic Shrine that sits atop it and has for the past 1400 years. Uh, but I wanna leave that issue for a moment and direct your attention right there to that bend in the highway exactly in the center of the screen that you're looking at. It's to the left of the bend in the highway that sits the site of Old Testament Jerusalem right there. The site of the former Canaanite city of Jebus conquered by King David 3,000 years ago. And he would build his palace on top of what's now in the center of the screen. It looks like this massive stone wall slanted inward uh, into the hill itself. I hope you can see it. It's in the middle of the screen there. And I'm loath to zoom any uh, wider, okay, because it will interfere with the, with the grand picture here. But that wall in the middle of the screen that's leaning inward was a support structure built to support the building on top, none other than King David's palace. That's what we believe, okay? Now, David, when he died, his son Solomon, as you know, took over the reins of power, and he would extend the limits of the city, across the bend in the highway right there, further up on Mount Zion slash Mount Moriah, and he would build his temple, the very first Jewish temple, on that site right there. I maintain on the exact site of the Dome of the Rock, right there. I'll explain that in a later episode. I'm actually going to dedicate several episodes to the subject of the Temple Mount. But just know that Solomon's Temple, that grand first temple of the Jewish people, stood right there, covered today by the Dome of the Rock. And now I'm standing on what was that most distant hill to the south, the Hill of Evil Council. That place where in the 4th century local Christians began to believe that it was here that Judas betrayed Jesus to the high priest. This was owing to their belief that the house of the high priest Caiaphas was originally located here. It wasn't. And in fact, the view of Jerusalem from the next hilltop that I'm going to take you to, that place called the Western Hill, will be from the site that some modern-day archaeologists have identified as Caiaphas's house. Now just know that Judaism has its own tradition related to this hill, the Hill of Evil Council. Jewish tradition has this hill as the place from which Abraham departed with Isaac on foot to Mount Moriah in order for Abraham to offer his son to God as a sacrifice. Now look how far we are from Mount Moriah. It's where that golden dome of the rock sits. We just saw that from the Mount of Olives. I told you it's the place that I believe that Solomon's temple stood. Uh, later on in future videos, I'll argue why I think that's the exact spot that Solomon's temple stood. But uh, for now, we're on that furthest away point from where I was standing and doing the 360 degree uh, view of Jerusalem from within the city. Um, I would say that we're at least a couple miles away from there. I'm uh, zoomed up on the site, so it looks closer than we really are. 
Uh, you can see from the walls of the so-called old city, the city of David, again, the former site of the Canaanite city of Jebus, descending and ultimately ending at the convergence of the three valleys, Gehenna, Kidron, which is that uh, most obvious canyon looking valley to the right of David's city, and the third valley being the Cheropian or Cheesemakers Valley. All right, and now from the western hill facing to the west of the city, that asphalted road below me is the Cheropian or Cheesemaker Valley, the least famous of the valleys of Jerusalem. We're panning south, and that's the city of David between this spot called Caiaphas's house and the Mount of Olives there in the distance. And lastly, from the top, the walls of the so-called Old City, where I'm standing right now, looking at the Mount of Olives there in the distance and that bend in the highway we saw from the Mount of Olives, but this time we're looking at it from the west. And as I now turn the camera southward, we're looking at the city of David, the former site of the Canaanite city of Jebus, descending southward down the slope of Mount Zion until it culminates in the convergence of the three valleys, Kidron, Gehenna, and Teropian, off there in the distance. Well, friends, it's almost a wrap. We're near the end of this first episode of Israel on Foot. But before we part ways until the next episode, did you see from each of the hills that Mount Zion, which is also known as Mount Moriah, is the lowest hill in the region? It's surrounded by higher hills. Hence, somebody standing nearby, standing very close to where I am right now, observed in Psalm 125, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so does Yahweh surround his people from this time and evermore, okay? Obviously, that person who said that and penned those words was standing very close to where I'm standing now. It's the exact same perspective that I see from this area. Now, this is the wonder. In the ancient world, the temple to a patron deity of a particular people or city would always be on the highest hilltop in a given region. And this was probably related to that belief that the deities dwell atop the highest mountains in a region. The most famous example of that, of course, is Mount Olympus in Greece with Zeus and, and all those other gods. But here, the house or temple of the God of Israel was situated on the lowest hilltop in the region. Totally the opposite of what was the custom of that day. If you were to ask me, Steve, why was that? I can't give you a reason. I simply don't know. All I can tell you is that the prophet Isaiah in chapter 2 saw that in the distant future from his day, there would be a radical revolution of circumstances in which this hill, Mount Zion, again also known as Mount Moriah, would be high and lifted up above all the other hills in the region. So we have a lot to look forward to, uh, but before that happens, I'll see you on episode two of Israel on Foot. Again, I'm Steve, the tour guide. See you, shalom. I just got so caught up in my teaching that I forgot to mention some practical matters. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel and clicking on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. And lastly, consider becoming a partner or patron of the page. You can see a link on how to do that below the video. Now it's Shalom. See you on the next episode.